But the moment you make the decision to go from the minor leagues of being a micro farmer and to going into the ranks of commercial farming, any of these senior farmers telling you, you don't need a vet, don't call a vet, don't deal with the vets. Yeah, you don't want to deal with these fake vets out here who don't take their career seriously. But if you have somebody who's serious, who will commit to your program, you make sure you value that person like you value your most prized asset. And guess what? When it comes to business, you should never play games. farm family welcome back to another episode of the farm if you're new here you are most welcome please consider subscribing if you have it already and also turn your notification bells not to miss out on any episodes of the farm and of course to all our returning subscribers thank you so much really appreciate you guys so much well guys we are back at the farm it's amazing it's a very sunny day we've been doing our rounds so much going on right here and i'm really super excited my co-director is back on ground <laughs> i'm so happy so much relief you know when you're just here and you're handling each and everything your the pressure is real but when he's around i'm really so happy right here and we also have our doctor right here who is going to say hello to you guys and also my co-director to say something you're most welcome thank you thank you so much tina thank you so much mr grafton uh, these are my directors uh, I'm happy to be part of Value Farm team. Value Farm has been home away from home and we are here uh, to take farming into another level. And uh, to talk about farming, specifically about animals, we are here to be an inspiration to all farmers, inspiring to start breeding in goats, pigs and cattle. Thank you so much. You're That's most awesome. Welcome. Guys, um, and of course, it's to me, it's, it's an honor to actually have Dr. David here. But I have to say, those of you who have been watching, you know, my name is Grafton, co-director here at Value Farm. And um, in life and in business or in relationships, sometimes you reach a pivotal moment. As a young company, we were at a crossroads. You know, being here in Uganda, the challenges of being a farmer, challenges of scaling, you see, that's the key word that most people don't think about, right? Everyone can get into farming. You could decide to have three goats tomorrow, or you start with two pigs today and have 300 pigs in a matter of like, you know, a year and change. But when you think of scaling, right? Being able to go from being a micro farmer to a commercial farmer, there are parts of the book that they just don't tell you unless you actually go to the school of hard knocks. And what do I mean by that? As a farm, as farmers, as co-directors here, we really suffered, guys. We suffered with hiring vets that did not work for the farm. We suffered with hiring inadequate management for the farm. And I have to give my friend um, Jennifer from Kenya, you know, Daiichi Farms. Um, she has definitely been an inspiration for me and for my co-director here. And I remember watching one of her, um, she was featured on, a, on another YouTube channel um, in Kenya. And I remember when they featured her pig farm and she actually had the highest ranking member was her vet. Mm. And so this was the time I was still here in Uganda, me and my partner, this is right before we actually went out to Kenya on the escapade to find our dopper sheep. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's when the journey had to expand. Yeah. And so after watching our program, after researching, and looking at that bottom line to see how much money we were losing by not having proper care and management of our flock, we came up with the brilliant idea. Maybe we we're crazy, but we might be crazy enough to actually make the investment to hire a full-time vet. Mm -hmm. And so when we actually met this young man, he really truly was so humble. And to his credit, he has remained humble. He's been a loyal, part of our family here. And I have to say a special thank you to not just him, 
but to his mom because when I collected him from where he came <laughs> from, I had to meet the mom. That's like really the tradition of the Maasai people, Maasai my people. people. And I actually have a Maasai stick, by the way, mm -hmm. wow. you know? So literally I had to take him from the, his, his mama's bosoms <laughs> to bring him here to Value Farm. And we did, thanks to Dr. Nicholas, who made this recommendation. Exactly. And I have to say, since day one, that this young man has been on the ground, life at Value Farm has never been the same. No one has worked harder at his craft, no matter the time of day, night, if a co if an animal is in any type of discomfort. This morning we pull up into the farm and literally my guy here was performing triage operation, mm -hmm. operation. on one of our goats that actually had um, a, a, a cut and he was there suturing everything up like a professional. And of course, this is not the most comfortable place to be, especially when you're used to being at home, when you yeah. leave medical school, you're used to being around all your family friends. and friends. But to be able to have the courage at such a young age to actually say, you know what, I'm gonna pursue my passion because of his passion mm. for taking care of these animals. That's what convinced me, you know, that he was the right fit, the right hire. And let me tell you, we've hired so many people. We've been through so many staffers that came with such promise. There's a saying back home, at times the tough guy comes in like a lion and ends up leaving like a lamb. Mm. Well, this young man, humility came in as a lamb and turned out to be a lion, a lion. He had Value Farm because his work ethic, his dedication, his integrity, you cannot place a price tag on that. So for that, my brother, I said thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of the family. Thank you. And of course, officially, this is our, our main guy on the ground here. And in fact, the farm under his mm -hmm. tutelage has been expanding. And guess what, guys? We've been scaling. Mm -hmm. because we actually have an expert on the ground. <laughs> on the ground. I don't want to say too much. I'll pass it back to my co-director. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about credibility, David has not only been, you know, only working by himself, he has been working with a team. And he makes sure that the team is cooperating. Even the young staffers that we have at the farm, he makes sure everyone is really working to their best. And he also tries to teach them what they're supposed to do, the skill they need to have as well. So he's not only selfish, like keeping all the knowledge to himself or working by himself, but he also shares his knowledge with other people so that they can learn. So David, we really appreciate you so much. And of course, with us scaling up, you're not even worried. You're always encouraging us. Please scale up, bring us more animals. So we are not even scared, like you're, we are going to stock these expensive animals mm. from South Africa that they're going to maybe die, they're not going to adapt. We have someone on ground who's going to make sure he's taking care of these animals. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. And I actually want to say something else. I, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want to dovetail to this point, guys. Mm. I know what many of you are thinking. Mm. I know some of you are like, ah, uh. can I really afford this? Exactly. I don't have the capital to actually go out there and get a vet. These guys are rich. No, that's not what you should be not thinking. That. What you should be asking yourself, when you have these fake managers there and these fake vets that you're hiring from these districts that are coming onto your farm, they know what's wrong with your animals, but they will purposely not uh, administer the right medication the right to make sure that they curb whatever potential outbreak might be there because they want to squeeze you for money. Or even want to come back. Or they want to come back and they want to sell you their medication because they know, ah, you know what? Some of these guys will even tell you that they can cure mm. brucella mm. <laughs> when you're desperate and you don't want to lose your flock. Ask yourself, how many of you can afford to kill off a hundred of your goats or wipe out your whole flock and starting over? Listen, money is money, but time is everything. You can never, ever replace lost time. And the bottom line is, we experienced major setback in terms of hiring people that made promises, that pretended to know what they were doing, and yet they were actually learning by killing our flock here at the farm. So, if you're currently losing three to four goats per week, because I know some of you are, guess what? You do that calculation. Even if you have local goats that you could easily sell for 250 to 300,000 shillings mm. per goat. 
If you're losing two goats per week, you, my friend, can afford to have a vet. Now, where it's gonna get tricky, there's only one, David, and don't you try to come for my guy. <laughs> Even if you try, I'm not sure he's gonna go anywhere because he's a very loyal and respectful young man. But I know many of you have already tried behind our backs. Yeah, they have already. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> because at the end of the day, it comes down to the person and it comes down to the person and how you treat mm. that yeah. individual. Yeah. And from day one, we've always treated this young man as if he was a part of our family. Yeah. You know, there's no adversarial relationship. Mm. There's no master to boy relationship. There is the doctor here on the ground. We give him the respect, respect that he yeah. deserves. And in return, we get the same. And, and something amazing starts to happen when you have a vet there. At one point, I can't lie to you guys, our mortality rates for our kids, I believe was closer to like 50 plus because we had fake caretakers on the ground. We had fake section managers on the ground that literally thought, what, what, was, what was the drug, 10%? 20%. 20%, what was the drug, tetracycline? Mm. Kills everything. And in reality, our ghosts used to always, it was the same pattern. Mm. Kids were born looking so beautiful and healthy. You come back a week later, they have diarrhea. Three days later, dead kids. Yeah, and people at the farm would tell you like, oh my gosh, no, no, they're getting better. They're gonna recover. Mm -hmm. But in reality, they're just telling stories. And a lot of the times that they were either overdosing these animals or underdosing these animals. And a lot of the time, guys, especially for you new farmers out here, it's not all sweet when you start because you're gonna take your lumps. You need to have thick skin. You need to understand in life and in any career you get into, there will always be a learning curve. And a lot of these vets, their favorite targets are new farmers like we once were. Yeah. A lot of these fake breeders in Uganda, they only target new young farmers like you who doesn't know anything, who's gonna try to sell you percentages of animals that are not accurate. They're gonna try, you go to their farm, you're thinking you're dead to buy 87% goats or 93% goats, and you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna mix regular Mubende goats into that flock. They're gonna go to the market. They're gonna get goats that they know should not be there for suitable breeding reasons. They're still gonna try to pass them off to you at a 300% markup. So what does that tell you? Understanding where you go, understanding the market, taking your time to do your research, and then there's another saying, and I know I always give you guys these golden nuggets. Speaking of gold, my grandparents used to always tell me, young man, mm. not everything that glitters is gold. So for many of you who do follow us, guys, I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to keep it real. Mm. And we give you this information. It's not, sometimes it's gonna, it's gonna go down a little easier than other times. But when we talk about these issues, that's because they are real and they have impacted people in a such a negative way. Many people have wanted to get into the field. They got in, they dipped their toes in, some jumped both feet first, and they find themselves crashing and burning. Not because they didn't work hard, Mm. Not because they didn't have the passion. And that's another thing too. Please, can we stop with this passionate former nonsense? Because we all have passion. You know, if you want to go to school to be a doctor, to be a vet like this young man, passion exists. But passion like talent will only get you but so far. What's going to take you the rest of the, work, the way is your work ethic and of course your determination to see whatever the task is to the end. Wow. You understand? But when it comes down to it, sometimes you have the invisible hands working against you. And the invisible hand could be the staff that you hire, the vest that don't work for you, that's going to a hundred different farms, yet they're bringing diseases to your farm. True story, if not for Dr. David here. We actually had a situation where we wanted to test for brucella at our farm because we were purchasing cows from another district. Was it cows? It no, was no, no. Goats. goats. We were purchasing goats from another flock, from another group. And when the goats came to the farm, 
we wanted to test before we introduced them to our main flock. So we called a district vet to help us because at the time we didn't have the vacutainers, we didn't have all the necessary equipment here. Right. And plus we had a lot of other goats at the farm and Dr. David had his hands full. So we figured we'll call for backup and bring somebody else to help us. This vet showed up <laughs> with just three syringes to test like 40 or 50 goats. Yeah. 48 goats. 48, 48 goats, goats, right? So what does that mean? He had intended to use the same, same. syringes mm. to draw blood. So if out of the 48 goats, if only one had brucella, oh, no. he would have ended up infecting each and every single one of those goats. And I say this to tell you guys, these are supposed to be professional vets. For somebody to actually show up to your farm. Now, guess what? If we didn't have a vet on the ground, right? If we didn't have experienced people on the ground at our farm who actually cared enough about the animals and stepped in, it was like, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? How many syringes do you have? Please, you need to go. Guess what? That whole flock was going to be, gone. Was going to be infected. And guess what? When the goats get brucella, it doesn't show up immediately. It may take weeks, sometimes months. And you know what? That mistake could have completely wiped out our entire flock. So, another saying back home. What is the price of peace of mind? Many of you may look at a vet that might cost you a couple of million shillings. You understand? And then you ask yourself, I can't make that commitment. Yes, at the beginning level, you may not be able to. But the moment you make the decision to go from the minor leagues of being a micro farmer and to going into the ranks of commercial farming, any of these senior farmers telling you, you don't need a vet, don't call a vet, don't deal with the vets. Yeah, you don't want to deal with these fake vets out here who don't take their career seriously. But if you have somebody who's serious, who will commit to your program, you make sure you value that person like you value your most prized asset. And guess what? When it comes to business, you should never play games when it comes to your family. The way you feed your family is the same way you take care of your business. And the people who take care of your business, guess what? They are also a part of your family. It's a very simple principle. Tina? Thank you so much. You know, if you have your notes, your pen and paper, I hope you've written down all those key points. Thank you so much, Grofton, because you're always straight to the point. <laughs> I'm sorry. And if people have ears, they should listen. <laughs> if you don't have, then it's going to, you know, bypass you. And, but, and I'm so sorry. It's I wanna, okay. I want to make sure I preface this by saying, mm. if you are a vet out there, you should be just as angry as we are. Because there are some good vets, yeah. And there are some pretenders in these streets. Exactly. So for those of you that are professionals like Dr. David, like I think we work with a young man, Dr. Biles. I think Stephen Biles was his name. Mm. He actually came onto our farm. He did a fantastic job from McCary University. Those quality vets, you should be happy that we're actually telling the truth about what the situation really is on the ground. You understand? But if you're a fake vet out there, like we had one other fake vet that we used to use for artificial insemination of our cows. <laughs> he shall remain goes. nameless, but he know who he is. <laughs> that guy, yeah, you should be ashamed of yourself because I know what he did here, he has done to many other, other places. Hmm. You understand? And a lot of these guys that are trying to do artificial insemination, they're not using authentic samples. They come into your farm telling you, oh, we have Duroc semen here. But yet they literally are getting basic samples from random farms for basically random nothing. Mm -hmm. And they, they're packaging it as if they bring you authentic um, um, semen samples, straws. So you, you guys out there, you should be ashamed of yourself. But for the good vets that are out here doing the good Lord's work, then there should be nothing here for you to take offense to because the truth will always be the truth. truth. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Guys, we need to go and check on the goat. You know, Grafton <laughs> has just arrived. Really? <laughs> he has just arrived here. So with, of let's, course, let's Dr. Go, David, Dr. right? No, wait. <laughs> with Dr. David right here, we've been on ground. We've yeah. seen how the animals are already, you know, adapting to the environment. So Grafton, 
fresh from South Africa. <laughs> Ask to go and check on those animals right there. So, the guys, let's go here. so that we can see these animals. Let's go. <laughs> Guys, when we just enter, the goats went outside. <laughs> but anyways, we are right here with the with the bucks. I know. Yesterday, when I posted something on on our shots, someone was saying I was over exaggerating when I talked about the buck, the stud buck that we had here. That oh, look at the chest. Huh? Someone was like, "Took you too much." But I wasn't too much. I was just telling you guys how I felt and how it is right here. And of course, there were some people who were really thinking, you know what? Those are just normal bugs, normal boas. Don't exaggerate. These are, these are not even stud bugs. These are really stud bugs. We have stud bugs right here. Then we also have the real boas. Pure boas right here. I know Grafton is the best person because he was the one in the selection, you know, selecting them in South Africa. He should tell us more about the studs and also these other normal boas that we have. Yeah, guys. So I was there on the ground myself. I mean, I wish I featured in some of the shorts mm. I selected along with our friend down in SA. Um, I picked these bucks myself. The documentation is here. True. So if there's any question about what it is that's here on the ground, you're more than welcome when you come here. You'll we see. can show you documentation. You can go to the South African, you know, boar stud book. book and you will find them there. Um, yes, typically they come with the silver clip, but sometimes the clips fall off because these goats do get shipped from South Africa. They do border aircraft. Sometimes there's as much as 65 goats in the same crate, you understand? So, but the most important thing is this documentation. We have it and uh, you, we really truly welcome you guys to join us on the adventure because now part of what we're gonna do as a team yeah. is to make ensure that real authentic stud quality animals are entering the country. You know, guys, in, in life sometimes you find your calling and sometimes your calling finds you. You see, for us, we never thought we would be exporting and importing any animals. True. But as a team, we realize sometimes if you want the job done right, mm. you must do it yourself. Exactly. So getting on the ground, going to South Africa, visiting these other farms, networking with other farmers, you know, because there are different levels of these animals. Just because you see a boa have the, the brown head and of course the white body doesn't necessarily mean like it's a pure. You understand? Um, ultimately, as a team, right, what we want to do is make sure that whatever bucks and whatever does that we do import here at the farm, many of you have been reaching out to us. You want to get help in West Africa. Yeah. You want to get help sometimes here in East Africa. And then we refer you to people out on that side. They're not responsive. They don't get back to you. Or they're just not really doing the way, they're not following up the way that we would recommend, right? Now you can actually reach out to us directly and we can assist you in the way that you can be assisted. Because as a team, our aim is to help elevate the overall quality of the animals we have here in East Africa and across the region as a whole. Our boy here is a bit congested. Yeah. We're going to make sure we actually take care of it. The doctor's already in the house, mm. literally. Mm. <laughs> so he'll be able to manage that situation. Mm. But yeah, you can easily tell the studs the moment you are exposed to these animals, 
when you understand what to look for, the curvature in the face, the overall length of the, the, the ears, also the overall body composition, you can never mistake in a stud mm. for a flock animal. Yeah. It's impossible to do that. You understand? But when you get here on the ground, maybe one day we'll actually host a clinic here. True. We'll do a training. Mm -hmm. We'll invite you guys here so we can actually show you what we have, how you can easily tell the Different reals from shit. the fakes. Mm. You understand? And another thing too, guys, a lot of people have boar goats that they're claiming to be breeding quality boar goats. And in reality, they're just flock goats. Mm. And I don't want that to keep happening to people. Because guess what? In the past, it happened to us. And that's the difference, you know? We bring you stuff and we share experience with you that might be a bit uncomfortable to share, but we tell you the truth. We keep it real with everyone. You that's understand? True. Because why we're actually getting into this industry is to prevent you. <laughs> Some of you can only save your money to get that one buck. And to find out somebody's going to South Africa or importing from South Africa subpar animals, that they even going as far as driving these goats from South Africa to bring to you here is a travesty. You understand? We're not claiming to be experts, but I'll tell you one thing, we do work with the experts mm -hmm. and we do understand what to look for. And we do understand the pain it causes you monetarily, when you spend your hard-earned cash on an animal that's supposed to be pure breeding quality and it's just turned out to be just a standard flock animal which is meant to go to the butcher which can potentially be upgraded to a breeding stock. But if you're gonna pay stud pricing, by God, you deserve to actually end up with a real stud. That is true. Then also, I think it was on TikTok, someone, when I posted, because I posted a few clips right there, so someone was like, ah, these goats are really so nice, but I'm even scared to ask for the price. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get scared, guys. It's are going to be posting the pricing list out there for you yeah, guys. Yeah, we shall everyone. definitely have a whole price list for all the goats that you need for different breeds as well because we have different breeds like the Kalahari Reds, you've seen them here. We have the Savannas as well. Then we have the, the Boas here. Then of course the sheep, we also have the Dopers. We have the Meat Masters. For those who also want Meat Masters, we can definitely give you, we can import for you from South Africa as well. Then also the blackberry. I've seen some farmers who are also into blackberries. In, if Do your research properly so that you know what breed you really want to, to have at your farm. But what we have right here, we shall definitely give you. We already have some that even have already adapted to the environment in Uganda. And of course, that we are selling them. So just reach us out so that we can give you these breeds right here. We're not selfish people. And I want to also appreciate all farmers because we do not only import us as value farm, there are other farmers who have really made an effort to also import for their farms as well, which is really amazing. This is really becoming something that is growing in our country. We are improving our breeds every now and again, and which is really better. Most people listen to these videos, they watch and also learn. So if you're a farmer out there and you've improved, you've already purchased your goats, Bravo to you. Thank you so much because you you mean a lot to the farming community right here. And of course, for the, for the feeding of these animals here that you've seen, you might be saying some bales of hay here. We, because the, the feeds they were, they were feeding from South Africa is quite different from what we have right here. We have a lot of lush here. The greenery is too much. In South Africa, they were in a much drier place. So for them to adapt and also adjust in feeding, we had to also bring some dry hay for them so that they can slowly but slowly adjust in their feeding as well. But more videos, of course, will be coming up for you guys so that you can know exactly how we are treating them, how we are feeding them, and also definitely how they are adapting in this environment right here. But I should appreciate Grafton, eh? <laughs> my co-director, for all the effort, for all the time. He spent so much time in South Africa making sure that he sources for the right breeds from the right people because not everyone in South Africa sells the perfect goats that you are seeing right here. Because some people have gone to South Africa and they go to the different markets. Different regions, as well. yeah. Exactly, yeah. different regions and they bring for you animals that are not up to standard. So for him to take his time and to do his research properly, 
I should really appreciate him so, so much. Thank you so much, Grofton, for all the effort it's that a you're pleasure. making. We yes. do it all for you guys. We do it for the team <laughs> and we do it for you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is it, really. Is there anything else you want no, to add on, on that's this? It. Yeah, the goats are outside. We you let guys them will get the B rolls. Yeah. I shall definitely give you guys the B roll for that. But for more questions, in case you have questions, you have any suggestions as well, leave them down below. Do not forget, in case you write a message on WhatsApp and it's not responded on time, just call, you know, because we want to also give to our neighboring countries like Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Congo, Sudan, in case you're interested. That is also very possible, by the way, because we are now ready. You know what? When we started all this, like Grafton said, we wanted to do it also ourselves so that we can see exactly how is it really done. Now that we've seen how it is done properly, we want to help other farmers as well. And of course, with the neighboring countries, we are able to do, we are able to import for you the animals right here. But we appreciate all of you who have watched this video up to this point. Thank you so much. You guys are really gems. And also give this video a thumbs up if you've really watched also up to this end and for those who have not really checked out our social media platform i don't know what you guys are really waiting for because we sh we share these short clips with you guys out there on instagram it is value farm ug facebook value farm tiktok is also value farm go see behind the scenes and also learn more but we appreciate you guys till next time bye bye